Greetings everybody, this is Sly Slime, and we're back in the Predator world, as you can probably tell. Today we're gonna attempt something fairly difficult. I am going to... oops. I am going to try to explain to you how this thing works. It's a fairly big contraption, but it's based off of patterns. So many of these command blocks are going to be the same kind of command. So we don't have to go through all of them because that would take quite a long time, which is a good thing. So uh, we are at pretty much zero, zero. Uh, zero, zero is this block here. And the whole world is set up in the way that I showed in my advanced commands tutorial about redstone performance. So uh, this very corner is the very, very edge of the spawn chunks. This full clock is placed here at the very edge of the world, at the bottom of the world here, it's been generated in. And this is a 12 block long fill clock, and as you can see we're not using quite all of it. And this one and this one are actually the only fill clocks that are running constantly. And they're offset like this because they're in different chunks. So you can see now that I'm in chunk 100. Uh, so these are both 12 block long fill clocks. And these are all that's required to run constantly. But scoreboard object is set to play sidebar T. You can see that we have a tick counter on uh, an armor stand. This armor stand is hidden inside here somewhere. And every different value for this, a different part of the process happens. So it's kind of it's pipelined, if you know what that means. But essentially it means that we run one part of the whole process, store the results of that in a scoreboard, and then while we're running the next part of the process, we're running the first part of the process again for a different piece. So that's why you can see if I... Uh, if I go over here, you can see that my armor updates, and you can see the different parts updates with a slight offset. And that's because the different parts of the armor are treated in different stages of this process. How that's done then is over here. We can see these chunks are full of what appears to be clocks, but they aren't actually clocks. So if I break this, it'll take a random amount of time before it gets set again because it's a clocking block every fifth tick, not every tick. So we actually have uh, a chunk full of one, two, three, four, and five different sets of commands and these are all run. And then we have a whole bunch of chunks like that and we can see that the different stages have a bit different amounts of commands and all the way over to the last one where you can actually see one of the hidden armor stands there, and it's only uh, the first one. So this one actually is empty, it doesn't have a single command block in it. Whew! That's a lot of stuff. So what do these things actually do? Well, there's a lot of stuff going on here, and you can see a whole bunch of scoreboards. We can actually do scoreboard objectives list, and you'll get a list of all of them. And they do have display names to keep things a bit more uh, understandable, even for myself. So there's a second. Now they're kind of in random order here, which makes it a bit awkward. But there's a couple of just calculation space ones, which serves as like temporary storage for stuff while we're calculating values. And then there's a bunch of ones that are like high and low positions offsets blocked. So, um, let's grab a block here. So I'm standing on this block here, and I have these four blocks around me. And if this block is blocked, so it's not air, then my boots should not take the block underneath this block here into account. So when this block is here, we take this block into account instead of this block underneath. Same goes for up here. If this block is here, uh, then my headpiece should not take this block behind it into account. So we set up a bunch of scoreboards like that that are uh, high Z positive blocked. And this 2 1 is if it's blocked two steps out from me. And then there is a, a Z positive block, and a Z negative block, and a high X negative block, and so on. And every tick, actually, we update all of those. 
So regardless of which stage we're in, we update all of those because the different armor pieces all use different parts of those. So there's a whole bunch of that stuff here. And what we do is we set them all to one and then we do execute the detect for air. And in that case, we set them back to zero. So that's quite simple, but it takes a bunch of commands to do that. And then there's also this kind of thing where we do an operation to the two out blocked ones to start them off because if so if this block is blocked then this is also blocked by definition because this is in the way of that so that this whole clock is just dedicated to updating those and then we have this clock over here let's dig in to get access to this here we add one to the tick counter this this long thing here is called t and if the score has become five then we wrap it back to zero then we're going to detect here if you're actually wearing the predator things. So we have a scoreboard called PL, which is like predator leggings, and a scoreboard called PC, which is chest piece, and PH, which is the helmet, obviously. So we're setting those to zero, and then we're going to run a detect command for scoreboard player set APC1. If you have uh, in your slot 102, you have a leather chest plate with a display name of predator chest plate and in that case you get score one and because of the way this is handled you can't really take these things off so if i try to take them off you get them placed back again and that's because there's a bit of lag in the system so it detects that they are off immediately but uh since since this whole thing is pipelined there's still some blocks out here executing to calculate which color your boots should have and then they place it back. So that would be possible to fix, it's just it would mean adding another score check to each of these commands, all of those over there. But oh well, it's not so important and once we've done all of that we are going to do this and this is where we actually execute commands on all of these clocks over here. So we're going to execute on this armor stand called T, and that's the armor stand that's standing hidden inside that clock. So this is going to happen first. Uh, we're going to execute if the score of T in the T scoreboard is zero exactly, then we're going to execute this command, which is we're going to execute for every uh, entity named C, which is an armor stand here, and we're going to do a fill with stone. And then what's going to happen next is we're going to do the same execute and then we're going to fill with a redstone block instead. So we're essentially, when the tick is zero, we're pulsing fill clocks on everything called C in the world. And if you look at all of these, there's going to be a armor stand named C in here and an armor stand called C in here and an armor stand called C in here here and so on and we could actually see that way over here where we don't have any uh, command blocks on the zero tick clocks and we can see this armor stand popping up here so we have one of those in each chunk here and then it's going to be the same thing for the other ones so if i look at this one then uh when the T score is one, then instead we're gonna uh, execute a fill clock with an offset of four, which is so one, two, three, four blocks all set. So we're gonna fill under these command blocks instead. And then what we're also gonna do is we are going, let me find one of those here. We're just gonna set your uh, PLT score to zero. If you have a PL score, at least one, so you're wearing the predator leggings, then we're going to set the PLT score to zero. And that's a very important scoreboard. Uh, let me find it in this list. Uh, here it is, PLT, is predator legs color total. So that is the scoreboard where we're going to be gathering up the total color that affects your leggings. So let's scoreboard a bit and set this blue side. Oops. Sidebar P. LT. You can see it flashes back uh, between some different values, and if I step here, it's going to be a big value, different big value. So that's kind of lets you see the calculations as they happen. So uh, that's going to have to be it for today. This is getting long, it's going to be confusing. 
I'll split this up into maybe two or three and then we'll take a look at what all of these things do next time and how it actually gathers up the colors, adds them up and that calculation is fairly complicated. I hope you understood some of this and I hope you're interested in seeing the rest of the explanation of this crazy machine. I'm going to try to release them in fairly quick succession here over the coming week or so. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.